back to these two models. I know I've got a few tangents, but it's all going to come together. So, with the with this model, you have a pyramid right here, or all the six squares create pyramids, or half an octahedron. And as I was saying, the energies are radiating out from the center sphere outwards, and sort of four main wavelengths as they go toward each other's spheres. This is the sort of thing where if you're really good with your third eye and visualizing, you need to make these models and think about it and visualize how these things flow. So I'm going to try to explain it and without having some fancy computer animation, which I do, do by the way, I'm going to use the Ma Maya soon, if you've heard of Maya, to make some of these models to help show them a little bit better, is you need to meditate this on yourself and think of how these things flow. Whereas I'm going to do my best to describe it. And the tetrahedrons, the tetrahedrons, because they're nice, even, nice, even geometry, is each one you could say is pulling energy into existence and it's collaborating in the center. Well, with this geometry, it's radiating out from the center point, being brought into existence. Well, with the Merkaba, this is the other way around, where this point, oops, I broke my little motto, no. Alright, there we go. Fixed. So, tetrahedron bring energy into existence this way, and all eight points bring the energy in. Eight triangles, just like this one. And this one has an octahedron on the inside. The Mer well, all Merkabas do. But you can see the octahedron on the inside. This little guy, it's right on the inside. Anyways, an octahedron, well, you might be able to see it better with this. An octahedron is like two pyramids put together, but there's six points. So in reality, there's almost six pyramids pulling energy into the, into the center. That's what these center points are, because these are the focal point of the energy. This is the most energy in the system is in the center. Anyways, yeah, six pyramids, six squares like on the equilibrium, and this one's raining energy inwards, just like the tetrahedrons. The octahedron in the center of the Merkaba is raining the energy inwards. So the Merkaba is like an antenna to pull energy in. So it's more like a black hole. And the equilibrium is reading energy out, which is more of a white hole. However, this is this is something I've been thinking about. I want some of you, some other people to think about and maybe help me with. Aluminum supposedly absorbs all this energy and shields all this energy. And if it does and this is the model of aluminum it sounds like aluminum material is more of a black hole material while the Merkaba should be the white hole and the equilibrium should be the black hole I mean other way around Merkaba uh, black hole equilibrium white hole however I could be completely wrong with that that's been my notion of understanding how pyramids work from my own experience from logical deduction other things. So I really would like other people to fill in on this piece and anything they understand about pyramid flow too. So back to recreating the vector equilibrium model. This is what I'm going to really try working on. So we're going to make 13 spheres. The first sphere, the center sphere, is going to be aluminum. And there's two type of arrangements. So the arrangement on the outside, which is 24 lines, which we're going to replicate with magnets as I described before with the octahedron little magnet mall. And the 12 on the inside are going to be replicated with magnets too. There's three ways, there's three type of symmetries, the 12 magnets on the inside can be laid out, and there's two type of symmetries that the outside part can be laid out. And I described the outside part, and I was talking about how the triangles can rotate um, clockwise and the square is counterclockwise in terms of rotation. Well, those can be obviously flip-flopped and they work the other way. So the question of which one to do is something to think about. Um, and that would be simple testing, trying both and seeing how they work. And you might have to flip-flop them if you're in the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. That might be the correlation between that. Now the inside 12, mag 12 magnets or vectors you can have them all pointing outwards, so it'd be pulling energy out of the aluminum, so that'd be south poles out, north poles in. Or you could have the south poles in, the north poles out, compressing the energy. And the other way is you can have the three going up, 
it, basically each one has a straight axis through because each one has a partner on the other side of the center sphere and so you basically have north south north south so they connect together and that would involve north 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 on the three tops and the bombs would then be south 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 and then you have a six ring around the center and going outwards you do north south north south north south and the energy would go straight through this seems more of a fluctuating natural one however it changes how the pyramid energy and the tri and the tetrahedron energy moves um, and that you also got to think about the outside might have a rotation going this way but then on the inside on the inside you have all these little triangular faces which technically are going to be creating some rotation too so they're all going to interact in a dynamic way that you want to create some sort of flow which is lots more stuff to think about. Um, otherwise, the one that I'm most interested in is having the energy radiating outwards. Um, and the aluminum, if you have the aluminum on the inside of it, this is something that a dis concept I haven't discussed about, is there's 12 magnets touching this aluminum sphere in the center. Now what happens is that sphere is actually going to replicate the same vector equilibrium model within the sphere and that all the vortices are going to make the natural configuration of a cube octahedron within it and it's going to be a fractal as as above so below the dot within the circle it's going to keep technically replicating on creating some of the fractal structure however the outside shell is something I've thought a lot more about and how it works because the outside shell is having one vector touching it from the center sphere and then four vectors touching it from its neighbor spheres. And so if we're looking at, uh, let's use this guy, you can see it best right here. This guy right here. All right, two, these two, the vectors are going out, the ones straight across from each other going out. Well, these two are going in, the ones that are straight across from each other. So if you're looking at it, straight on, these two are going in, these two are going out which creates a whole different dynamic on the inside and because you're having this one radiate outwards or the whole s the 12 vectors in the center radiating outwards the energy has to go somewhere well the outer shell the energy is completely self-contained it's sort of like a gear energizing the inside one to pull more energy outwards it's sort of like creating a monopole magnet you're having 12 lines of energy coming outwards so it makes you sort of wonder if you have this one with 14 lines coming in um, or doing a two vector equilibriums having 12 lines in and one having 12 lines out how they might work together so where to go from here all right so what would happen if you have the energy radiating outwards to the point that technically creates a six node a six uh, magnet, but it's its own magnetic field radiating outwards. There's no magnet, it's just the magnetic field. And well, the energy actually will radiate somewhere. It's going to want to come um, inwards. Actually, it makes me think about it. You want the magnets to go in because the energy is getting radiated outwards to the diamagnetic material. Because that's the, the big concept is if you have 12 spheres on the outside, you're going to have a diamagnetic material on the inside. And the, and the 12 spheres on the outside, my best notion is just to use iron, steel. And an uh, interesting concept is iron's atomic number is 26, while uh, aluminum's 13. They're, they're frequencies of each other, octaves. Uh, they're half the wavelength, so they're, technically iron is a higher octave than aluminum. And it's type of design that I thought the most natural way for it to be laid out. If you imagine a Merkaba, in between each two points on the Merkaba, you could have another point right here. Um, and each of these nooks, there's 12 nooks. 12 and 14 is 26. So you'd have 26 around it with the center being the octahedron seal, the 6, which I think would be, would be relating to the 6 vectors going out. Something I was just theorizing today. Um, but you want material that would best replicate 6 vectors going in and out. You can maybe think carbon. Um, but the iron might be it. I, I don't, so this is sort of like 
ideas I'm just sort of like throwing around my head I really want other people to start thinking about.